rivalry that never disappoints? Well, you've come to the right place. We are in Tacoma, Washington today, just 150 miles from Portland, Oregon, as the two fiercest rivals in the National Women's Soccer League face off. FIFA Women's World Player of the Year Megan Rapino leads the reign as they aim to clinch a playoff spot. Tobin Heath and the Portland Thorns are already into the playoffs but have their sights set on hosting a semifinal. The Cascadia rivalry kicks off next with the rain and the thorns and the NWSL on ESPN. Once dubbed the 100-day wonder for its quick construction, Cheney Stadium in Tacoma, Washington now hosts a massive NWSL match with plenty of playoff implications as Rain FC takes on the Portland Thorns. The Rain still fighting to get back to the postseason, but they picked up a big win here on Wednesday against Utah. Jody Taylor had the game-winning goal in the 86th minute. That one huge as it sets up what is at stake today. Now, there were some big matches last night in the NWSL. We know North Carolina has already clinched the shield, but they lost last night to the Washington Spirit. The Spirit's playoff hope still alive. Chicago had a late goal to beat Utah, and at stake today, Portland is in the playoffs, but must win their two remaining games to have a chance to host. And the Reign win today and are into the playoffs. And this time, they get a chance to do it with Megan Rapino. Hi everybody, I'm Jen Hildreth alongside two-time Olympic gold medalist Allie Wagner. We've seen this rivalry before. We saw them in the playoffs last year, which Portland won in the semifinals at home. What do you think we're going to get today? Normally, I, I feel like we know what to expect, but not this year. I mean, Portland typically peaks at this point in the season, but they haven't been as consistent as of late. And I think with the rain in Andonovsky, you typically know what style of play he wants, but they've had so many injury concerns. He's had to change things up tactically, so I'm not entirely sure. But one thing I do know with these two squads is that the midfields typically cancel each other out. And in such situations, and especially on a small pitch like Cheney Stadium, there's going to be a lot of restarts. And it's going to be that quick transition that is going to be important for both sides. Portland's so good at it. They spring Rasso in these moments. And then on the flip side, Seattle's incredibly good at it. Rapino with their quick throws. And then in this one, they get long restarting it. And that's how they get in behind the midfield of Portland. They isolate wingers. Both sides are going to want to do that today. Get their personality players isolated 1v1 in the situation. If Yoma takes her player, beats her on the end line, ultimately serves the box, and that is the go-ahead goal for Seattle where they pick up three points. Those restarts are going to be incredibly key today. Sometimes those small details are so important. Megan Rapino back on the field, and what a big boost she gives this rain team. She is standing by with our own Marissa Pilla. Megan, this game has playoff implications for both teams. A win for Portland, they could possibly host a semifinal. A win for your team, you're in the playoffs. What do those implications add to this already heated rivalry? Yeah, as if it needs to get uh, <laughs> any more intense or anything on the line. Um, I mean, for us, this is our season right here. Obviously, all the games that we have left um, are really important. And uh, for Portland, obviously, we know um, what a fortress they have uh, to the south of us and how important that would be for them. So uh, we'll try to dash those dreams, of course, while propping up our own. Thanks for your time, Megan. Cool. Thank you. Will dreams be dashed or realized today? We'll find out. And there are some big lineup changes coming as well. We'll tell you about it. And we'll kick this off when we come back. It's a chilly but beautiful day. And look, it is 11 a.m. Pacific time, and they are packed in here to Cheney Stadium. Over 7,000 expected. That would be a record to watch a Rain FC match. Jody Taylor has been sensational when it comes down to finishing things off. She did it Wednesday night, had the game-winning goal against Utah. Three goals, three assists on the season. Starting lineup for the rain. You do get to see Megan Rapino in that starting 11 for just the second time this season. Rebecca Quinn still at center back with Megan Oyster listed as questionable. Yeah, and there was a, an option for Vandenovsky on that right back position. He opts to go with Nielsen. She's more attacking minded, likely to pin back the wingers of Portland. And there's more balance with McNabb coming into midfield alongside Allie Long to help deal with her ram when she gets into more advanced positions. 
for the Portland Thorns. Midge Purse, what a great story she has been this season. Eight goals, one assist for Purse, and really a breakout year offensively for this Portland club. But here's the change. Well, it's no a big one. Eve. Yeah, exactly. And Caitlin Ford slots in for her. Some injury concerns with Heath. And that will actually change the complexion of this Portland Thorns team. Caitlin Ford, more of a back-to-goal link-up player. And I think that could prove an interesting role tonight if they look to pull forward the outside back of Seattle and then isolate Mitch Purse's pace against the pace of Quinn in the back line. That could be an area for them to get after. Thorns getting set to take the field. Haley Rasso getting a little last minute hug. Adriana French with the U.S. national team this summer at the World Cup. Her fourth year with the Thorns. And Casey Murphy, one of the new faces on the scene for Rain FC. Her first year with this club. And boy, have they needed her when the two goalkeepers they thought would start ahead of her both went down with injury. Mark Parsons has had so much success as a head coach, taking his teams to the postseason. He knows the Thorns are headed back that way. He wants to make sure they're headed back to Providence Park to host that semifinal. They need a win today to keep them on that path and give them that opportunity. Allie Long, so long, a member of the opposition. She knows this rivalry well, having played on both sides of it. Christine Sinclair will pass it back to Lindsay Horan and start things off here at Cheney Stadium. Rain FC forced to play a midweek game. It was a rescheduled match against Utah that they, in no uncertain terms, did not want to play this particular Wednesday because they knew they wouldn't have Megan Rapino for that one. As she was in Milan earlier in the week, winning the award for FIFA's Best Women's Player of the Year. But they got the game in, they got the win, and here they sit with an opportunity to get themselves into the playoffs with a win. But we'll see what kind of toll it took on their legs. I know in heated rivalries, you oftentimes have enough energy, but it's something to keep an eye on. A crisp 52 degrees today in Tacoma. Got some sun in the sky, though. I'm dressed for snow. I don't know about you, but it's cold. <laughs> got, I might have some hand warmers in the pockets, if I'm being honest. Darian Jenkins tries to control it for Portland. For the rain, excuse me. Better not be making that mistake with these two. Mm -hmm. No love lost. These Cascadia rivals are on the field. Rain won the first two meetings between these two clubs this season, both by one nothing score lines. France slips as she tries to distribute that ball. And fortunate that it comes right back to her. I mean, these pitch they have to make do with. It is, in fact, a baseball field, so oftentimes the turf hasn't taken in. And you can see she is right in that area yep. that would typically be dirt for a baseball field that has grass over it now. Those different surfaces can trip you up quite literally there in that instance. Our referee today, and you can expect he'll have an important job in front of him. Nelson will play it back to Murphy, allow her to distribute. Dagny Brunia's daughter getting back into that midfield for Portland. Emily Menges. Has Taylor right on her back, and French maybe taking a, an extra moment to be sure of her footing before getting rid of the ball. 
Rapino coming inside, but loses it. Purse looking for some help going the other direction. Megan Klingenberg. Knows this rivalry very well. Emily Sonnet looking central. Looking early on, it looks as though the rain are going to press just with their nine, Jody Taylor. And if that's such the case, you've got to have one of those center backs step through the lines. Yeah, is there anything else you're looking for a little early here, Ali, just in terms of our conversations this week, what we thought each team might try to do? You know, oftentimes the early moments are different from the way the game plays out, but one of the keys for Portland was stretching this pitch out as wide as they can, as vertical as they can, to create some space because Seattle's so tight defensively. We saw there just one end, one side line to the other. We told you what is at stake today. And there you can see all the different things that happened. Some very interested parties, in particular in Chicago, watching this one. The Red Stars with a chance to clinch that number two seed, pending the results here. A rain win or draw would give the Red Stars home field advantage in that semifinal match. Washington Spirit, I imagine, also watching closely, hoping that they can continue to have something to play for in these last couple of matches because the Spirit a do have win. two left. Yeah, and that was a big win over North Carolina last night. You know, Allie, in three NWSL matches that have been played this weekend already, they have all had goals scored in the 84th minute or later. So look at you, Stab Bomb over there. Come on. We're setting <laughs> up for some more drama as if this matchup needed any more. I'll take an early goal, too, though. <laughs> That's OK. Yeah, we don't mind those either. And that is actually one thing that Portland is going to want to take care of, not let Seattle get on the board first, because then they are so good just sitting back and playing on the break. Said in the open, this is a more vertical team than you would expect out of the Vlaku Andonovsky style. And why do you think that is? Personnel. You know, one of the things he actually told us was that it's a young squad, and so some of these players are incredibly eager to go forward, and sometimes with maturity comes patience. And it's hard to rein that in at times, especially when you do have the attacking dynamism that you do have in a Darian Jenkins and a Megan Rapino, even though she, what this is only her second start of the season. Allie Long is continuing forward, gets it over to Rapino. Sonic got in the path of the ball, but Rapino's still on it. Working against Carpenter, got her beat and earns the corner. Will the young Australian have what it takes to match up with the wily Rapino? It's always a duel that I love between these two sides, and Rapino gets her, her service back and then takes Carpenter second time to the service of Megan Rapino and Jody Taylor in the 18 can be a strong combination today for the rain. Ball bending a little too much. We are nearing the end of the regular season. In fact, just five matches remaining in the NWSL. One on October 5th. That is during the FIFA break. Orlando and Washington Spirit will play that one. And then four to finish things out on October 12th. Top four teams make it to the postseason. We know three of those four for sure already. Although the only order determined, North Carolina. Shot from Jenkins is blocked. Still a chance, Jody Taylor is in the box. Jenkins. A little out of the reach of Rapino, but she gets back to it anyway. Ball in the area. The 
Rebecca Quinn, Canadian international, in that center back spot with Megan Oyster, who's missed the last two games dealing with a knee injury. Hurst gets it over to Haley Rasso. Rasso looking for Ford, but overshoots it. Well, Portland had to put out some fires here. Darian Jenkins gets in around the 18, and then Rapino again, a good service. This one curling in behind the back line. Last ditch defending, an incredibly responsible Klingenberg at that back post. Rapino couldn't connect. But she's the one who actually even initiated that play. It was just a first-time interception that she pinged into Darian Jenkins. It's that quick transition that can prove fruitful today. Such a difference maker. I think, really, Rapino's continued absence this season due to the World Cup and then due to that lingering Achilles injury after the World Cup, you just give so much credit to Vlatko Andonovsky and what he has done and to the players who have gone out there and done it. I mean, the number of injuries really unprecedented that this Reign FC club has had to deal with this season. Here's a challenge from behind. Sinclair on long. Vlatko Andonovsky, one of those names that you often hear in the conversation as a potential, perhaps, to replace Jill Ellis as head coach of the U.S. Women's National Team. Just his second year with Rain FC. Spent five years with FC Kansas City, won two NWSL championships there. You and Vlaco get into some conversations this week where I, I just kind of thought, all right, I'm going to let Ali handle this because they're getting so technically detailed. I'm, I'm a getting nerd. a little lost, but I yeah. know you were eating it up. Oh, uh, yes. Steph Catley breaking free. Leads Rapino. Rapino in the corner. We'll get another corner. And that's a win. Mark that down as a win for the rain. When you're earning set pieces, especially with Megan Rapinoe's delivery, you could pay the price if you're Portland. Just to contend. A little bit of space to work with, but still a beautiful ball. Rebecca Quinn <laughs> had it right in front of her inside the six. Rapino loves to whip this service in on top of the goalkeeper. They straddle the goalkeeper. They sandwich her with numerous players. This one right on the doorstep for Quinn. Don't know how she misses that. I think she sees it at the last moment. It skips by. We can see the numbers that they're putting in front of Frange and Rapino so accurate with that delivery. Hurst trying to turn. Quinn holding her up. Haran onto it for Portland. How often will we say that? It could be key to what the Thorns are able to do. Nielsen wanting to feed Taylor. Twenty-second regular season meeting between these two teams. Rain leads it, although it is close. In the regular season, the Rain have won four of the last five. However, in the final regular season meeting last year and in the semifinal, those two matches both going to the Thorns. always a question when you get to this point in the season for rain obviously they still need to get into the playoffs for Portland where is this team 
Now you mentioned it, Allie. This is a team that typically, under Mark Parsons, has finished the regular season very strong. This year, they've had some questions, including a couple of losses, one of which was the worst in franchise history, where they flat out got embarrassed 6 nothing against the North Carolina Courage. They did bounce back with a win against Houston in their last match. That was just a one nothing victory, though. So I think it's fair to say there are some questions and, as to where this team is. And what's interesting about that is usually you, it's this, a reoccurring theme when a team is struggling. It sounded like this team is a bit all over the place in terms of pinpointing what went wrong in each match. And that lack of consistency is going to be more difficult to shore up than if it is just one single element. Yeah, when we talk to Mark Parsons this week, you know, we talk about one game and say, well, in this game, it was the finishing that right. wasn't there. In this game, it was the decision making that the wasn't there. Final third yeah. cross selection. I think that is probably one of the biggest things for this Portland team. But against North Carolina, it was the, the bite, the defensive discipline. He, you know, he blamed himself for the way that team prepared for that match. But ultimately, if you're having different problems, where do you start to build that brick or the brick wall again? What one do you fix first? And that's what they have to layer down. They've got to do it quickly because there's just not enough games left. French sends that ball. It bounces just outside the opposite 18-yard box. Marissa Pilla has been talking to the Portland bench. What have you heard, Marissa? Well, on the sidelines, I'm hearing Portland's head coach, Mark Parsons, tell Haley Rasso not to think, just to do when she's on the ball. We're going to see what Darian Jenkins chooses to do here, Marissa. Maybe a little hasty. Ball not yet out. And Marissa, go ahead and finish what you were saying there with Haley Rasso and her directions. Right. Mark Parsons is talking to Haley Rasso on the sidelines, telling her not to think, just do when she's on the ball. And I talked to assistant coach Rich Gunny, and he said they really like that matchup between Rasso and Reigns' Steph Catley. They think Rasso has that 1v1 ability and speed to get in behind, stretch Reigns' defense. They said she will be key in breaking down their compact defensive line. Well, I would add to that, you know, you got to bring into that picture the right back, and that's Carpenter. Test the defensive discipline of Megan Rapino. So I think those two going up against Catley is really a big opportunity. But thus far, Portland's been attacking down this left side. It looked like they were pushing Carpenter higher in their build, and they're going to build out of a three back with Kling. We'll see if that continues. But I think you need to, to favor that right side and make Rapino do defensive work. Pressure from Brynja Stoddard. Nearly took it away from Kristen McNabb. Told you he was going to have his hands full. <laughs> <laughs> he would expect nothing less. Megan Klingerberg told me this week, said, Pretty sure they hate us. We don't really like them very much either. At least not on the field. A lot of respect and camaraderie off the field. You added that. <laughs> Jenkins will take her chances. No, she did actually. She wanted to make sure that was not taken out of context. Back Klingenberg and Rapino and Tobin Heath, along with Kristen Press, all part owners of a company, Re-Ink, lifestyle streetwear brand. Nice plug. Yeah. I hope they're paying you for that. <laughs> I'll give you guys my address. You can send me some of that. I've got a line dropping in November, she said. Brilliant ball by Haran. Thank you for getting me back to the soccer alley. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> 
that and getting you paid. Well, we can expect that some choppiness is going to be a part of it, right? Sure. I mean, it always is. Especially, though, on this small field. I mean, there's just more chances for those challenges, those interactions. And one of the reasons Mark Parsons says we need to stretch this team out. That's one of the reasons Vlaco actually played McNabb as a more combative midfield. Carpenter. After suffering a season-ending Achilles injury, brain goalkeeper Michelle Betos told me now her second favorite spot in the stadium is above the goal, above her teammate Casey Murphy. And she said she really can't quite help herself. She is talking to Casey Murphy during the game, all game long, as well as this rain defense. She said she's able to direct them on the field. And often during the game, you can see rain's defense turn back, look at her, and give her the thumbs up, let her know that her message has been received. And Betos said throughout her rehab journey, this has been the best way she can stay in contact with her team during the game and help them succeed as the season winds down. Yeah, Michelle Beto is one of the goalkeepers on that season ending injury list. The ruptured Achilles trying to help out the young Casey Murphy. Jenkins so dynamic on the ball but had to get past two defenders. Klingenberg though got it tangled up on her feet a little bit. Haran had gone down actually before that play, sent it down the right side with a challenge from Ali Long when Long won the ball. Lindsey Haran, the reigning MVP of this league. Obviously an important player with the U.S. national team as well. As tough as they come, Haran jogs back up onto the field. Now the throw from Nielsen. Jenkins the target. The header from Yanez in the box. Sonic headed it out of bounds. But that will set up the third corner kick of this match for the rain. Well, on a small pitch like this, you can utilize these long throw ins much better. Two players doubled up on Jenkins, but she still gets to it first. You've got a front and back her. No use having two players behind her. She wins it easily, and then the second flick creates more problems. Callie with her left foot will take it from this side, bending it toward that far post for Pino. Gallantly tried to win it, and she'll just run on over to that other corner flag and ready to take it herself this time around. Fourth corner of this first half for the rain. More air under the ball this time from Rapino, but it got over the heads of everyone. The Cascadia rivalry here in Tacoma, Washington for the NWSL on ESPN. The Portland Thorns visiting Rain FC at Cheney Stadium. Jen Hildreth, Ali Wagner, Marissa Pilla, happy to have you along with us. Rain can clinch a playoff spot with a win. Portland Thorns are already into the playoffs, but now with Chicago's win last night, no, they must win their final two matches to host at Providence Park in the semifinals. And as Megan Rapino told Marissa Pilla before the game, as if this game needed any more reason for drama, that gives you a little bit more. No Tobin Heath, not even in the 18 for the Portland Thorns today. We were told it's a small injury keeping her off the field. But it was certainly a big loss for the Thorns. Haran tripped up from behind by Jenkins. That will set up a free kick for the Thorns. Haran has sprung to life in the last five minutes or so. I've just been watching her movement. 
I think her understanding of spacing has gotten better and better as she's aged, and she holds out of the play long enough and then bursts into the space where Portland's looking to find her, especially on their throw-ins on this left side. Megan Klingenberg getting the ball set. Four assists on the season for Klingenberg. That leads the Thorns. Driven ball. Back to Klingenberg it goes. Keeps it on the ground. Son, it finds herself open. Didn't want to take it herself. Looking for that far post. Klingenberg again on the ball. Rasso fights it for Haley Rasso. Just went wide. And a couple really good decisions by Megan Klingenberg. She tried to slip the ball in the last one, and then this reservice from her. The first time ball, you've got Rasso slicing across the back line. Shot just misses. But good final third play by Megan Klingenberg in particular. for all the attacking talent that there is in the midfield and in the front line for Portland on those set piece situations. You get someone like Klingenberg in there to set it up. You have Zonnet up there as well. Not a big goal scorer, but certainly another weapon. Oh, she always finds her. Zonnet always picks up goals in the season off of set pieces. Only in big moments, yeah, though. It's got to right. be a big game. I think this can qualify. I would agree. Long, a little too long on that delivery. Ellie Carpenter still just 19 years old in her second season with the Thorns in NWSL. Holds the title of the youngest to ever play in this league. Joined the Thorns just after she turned 18. Her hand touches it over to Sinclair. And then Purse plays it back. Ford out wide for Klingenberg. You wonder, does Klingenberg become more important with Heath out of the match to try to stretch horizontally on this side of the field? Well, she'll probably be utilized more with Ford. Ford will like to link up play more than Tobin Heath. Heath wants to be isolated. Ball in the middle for Rapino. Megan Rapino running for it. Decides to just take her time. Take the shot and hit the crossbar. Giannis follows it up. Menges saves it off the line. Welcome to the Cascadia rivalry, friends. Nielsen, Taylor in the box, the shot, and the goal! One of the things you have to do against Seattle's managed transition, and they did not do that. Seattle then gets in the advanced third. Really good ball in. Jody Taylor sitting between the two center backs, collects it with the first touch. And then quality strike to the far post, tucks that one in. Pass Adriana French. But I go back to the transition moment where Darian Jenkins slips in Megan Rapino on the far side. That gets everyone from Seattle into the attacking third. And then ultimately, they've got numbers filtered forward, and they punish Portland. Really good transition from the rain. You could feel that coming, couldn't you? And the rain know that if they win this match, they assure themselves a spot in the playoffs. They get to go back to the postseason, as they did last year when they lost in the semifinals to this Portland Thorns team. And just as a little 
added incentive. Not only would a rain win put them into the playoffs, it would ensure that their friends in Portland do not get to host a semifinal because it would secure the number two seed for Chicago. One nothing the scoreline in the first two meetings this season between these two teams. Both of those in favor of the rain. Haran takes it with her left foot and Murphy makes the save. It's a precarious position now for Portland to be in because they're going to have to take risks. I think one of those things that they're going to need to key in on is how do you get Haran in more advanced positions? Perhaps up alongside Kristen Sinclair or create an imbalance in those wide areas and overload with Haran. Allow Brynja's daughter to be the one to provide the balance in midfield. But if you do that, again, you're leaving yourself vulnerable in transition. And we just saw how quickly Rain can advance. And really, those were two back to back opportunities that happened quickly there with Rapino breaking free. Exactly right. And then they're so quick. They squeezed the game incredibly well, and they just didn't allow Portland to get out. Grasso coming in on the backside of Alley Long. Clips her up. Trips her up, excuse me. Alley Long spent five years with Portland, was twice named to the NWSL best 11 in her time with the Thorns. Wound up being traded to the rival Reign. This is her second year playing with this club. Really important for them and how they build out of that back. Purse touches it to Rasso. Rasso! Nobody home to get on the end of that one. Portland, we mentioned some of the struggles that they've had with those couple of losses. If you look at their last three matches versus their previous three before that, 1-2-0 in their last three, 3-0-0 three, oh oh before that. And the goals scored and conceded. They have only scored one goal in their last three, whereas they scored eight in the previous three, Ali. So, I mean, I think amongst the questions are, where are the goals going to come from? This is a team that has scored 40 goals on the season. That's third in the league. So right. they've proven they can do it. But can they continue to do it down the stretch? And with consistency, right? Referee's going to reverse that call, correct himself. It'll be a goal kick here. Casey Murphy, the 23-year-old out of Bridgewater, New Jersey, Rutgers grad, called into action and has started every game for this club since May 27th. She will be one of the stories that will be remembered as to how this team continued to stay afloat with so many players out with injury. Six season ending injuries and that was a little too long on the ball for Rebecca Quinn in the back. It turns it over. Mitch Purse as Allie Long came in to help defensively and snuff out that threat. Parsons had told Rasso not to think. You saw in that last play Mitch Purse hesitate. As soon as she gets in that half space, the ball at her feet, she needs to take her player on quickly and not allow that recovery. Good quick touch from Rapino to set up Yanez. Jenkins could not keep it in. Tobin Heath relegated to sitting in the stands to watch this one. That is never a good sign for Portland. Her 24 career assists tied for the most all time in this league. Obviously, we know what a talented player on the ball she is, both for club and country, as Klingenberg is on the attack. Murphy came out and got undercut. Both 
Oh, she and Lauren Barnes collide, going for that ball. Caitlin Ford trying to win yeah. it. Actually, yeah, it was Ford and Murphy. Ford called for the foul, but of course the bigger question is how is Casey Murphy? Told you that Michelle Betos had that Achilles injury. And Lydia Williams, the Australian goalkeeper, had been on the 45-day disabled list dealing with an ankle injury after the World Cup. Now, she has been taken off of the injury report, so potentially would be available. Let's break out the warm jackets in Tacoma today. Betos <laughs> watching over her young goalkeeper. As Marissa told you earlier, Betos has been very much involved in helping Murphy. He's playing in the NWSL for the first time this year. Sinclair wards off Yanez. Sets up Purse. Purse tripped up. Where was it? Outside the area in the eyes of our referee. Yeah, as soon as he blew his whistle, he headed straight to that spot. He had eyes on it the whole way. And this is a really good look for Portland. The inside out run of Mitch Purse to get isolated against the outside back. Teresa Nielsen, you saw it there right at the edge of the box. Right call. Yeah, good, good eyes by <laughs> our referee, Matt Franz. And what havoc now might Klingenberg wreak with this opportunity? You've got to fire this one right across the goal mouth. Any deflection. Either team, you take it. So many good targets. Brenya Stoddard, Haran, Sinclair. You think back to the U.S. goal in the World Cup, I believe it was against England with Reagan Rapino, the one she fired right at that near post. Really similar situation. Klingenberg. A lot of bodies in the air going for it. Brynja's daughter, the I target think, for the Thorns. And I think this ball is too lofted. I mean, even though it doesn't go that high, I just think it doesn't have enough pace on it. Brynja's daughter doesn't connect with it. Not sure what they're calling there. Now it went against the Thorns. Taylor waiting for it. Sonnet wanting to connect quickly with Rasso. Mentioned some big games last night in the NWSL. The Washington Spirit beating the North Carolina Courage, snapping a five game win streak for the Courage. Chicago getting a 2-1 win over Utah. That is the final game of the regular season for the Red Stars. Yuki Nagasato with the game winner late. And how about today? Sky Blue FC hosting Orlando at Red Bull Arena. Second largest attendance in their club history. Over 8,000. Carly Lloyd with the equalizer in the 88th minute in that one. And getting word that Sydney LaRue was able to play for the first time this season for Orlando. Sydney LaRue coming back after the birth of her daughter earlier this summer. Both of those teams out of the playoff race. 
Rapino in the rain, very much in it. If this result holds, they will indeed be into the playoffs. A win and they're in. Rapino touching it back to Cali. Not a lot of room for those two to work with. Now the ball sent in. Sonnet got there first. Rapino to McNabb. Took a couple of bounces. Poor French got there. Not sure who French was trying to send in that moment. Purse wasn't high up on that back line of Seattle. That ball went right to the feet of Midge Purse. Rasso pounding Quinn. No whistle. Plenty of contact between those two. They fought for the ball. Nielsen, the one to run into it. Jenkins, two defenders now in front of her. Long coming in. Allie Long still down after that attempt. And he'll get surging runs out of Long like that with McNabb in the game because McNabb can help provide balance in the midfield and give Long that freedom to get forward. Really like the decisions that Jenkins has been making in this match. She's a player that can take someone on the outside or cut to the inside. And she, so many players look to fire that across the frame, look for their own shot. But she's patient and finds the run of Allie Long. Good awareness. Mentioned that Portland has scored 40 goals on the season amongst the best in the league. For Rain, just 24 goals now, including the one today. They have found a way to eke out wins at times. Cali getting free, and Sonnet clears it up over the wall. You've got to credit the group, of course, but I think the tactics of Aminoski. This group is tight defensively, and as you said, they know how to get results. So if they even just go up 1-0, they can see the game out. Professional sports at the highest level, it's not always the case. Coming up on the NWSL halftime show, we'll go around the league and recap this weekend's NWSL action. Plus, Marissa will talk to Ali, get you a little playoff preview, and we'll break down our first half. Now the challenge gets a little steeper for Portland having to figure out how to break down this very disciplined Rain FC team. Now up a goal, but they are still very much on the attack. Nielsen. Overshot Jody Taylor and Bev Yanez as well. And if you look at the balance of the way Rain like to attack for the most part, it, with Jenkins on this right side, she tucks in and Nielsen gets forward. She's the one who serves the box. And on the far side with Rapino, she likes to go 1v1, and Catley's not going to be getting around her as often. Rain unbeaten when they have had the lead at the half this season, 5-0-1. Rasso. Ford waiting for it in the middle, didn't quite make it there. A lot of Australian influence in this match for both teams with Catley for Rain FC. Carpenter, Rasso, Ford. All 
ball for Portland. And here's one of those long throws at Carpenter's disposal. Could be trouble on this field. Haran got there. Brynja Stoddard keeping it alive. Ford bumps off Yanez, but not for long. Yanez called a warrior for this Rain FC team. Kept it going for Rapino. Long. Rapino to Taylor. Haran. Bicycle effort to keep it out. All hands on deck at the moment. Cali couldn't win it, that's okay. Coming in behind her was Rapino. All the way across, but out. Jen, you talked about Beviana as, as in the center of the park. I mean, she is one of those players that often doesn't get the recognition she deserves. Watch, just watch her if you're a young player. The way she wins challenges, releases it quickly. She's so incredibly smart. Even on that last play, the ball was over uh, with Nielsen on one side. She's the one pointing to say, hey, change it out the far side. And that's when Rapino gets on it. Two minutes of stoppage time added on to our first half. Purse. Carpenter back to Purse, who was not ready for it, knew she was offside. I haven't seen a lot of one on one attacks from Portland on that end, have we? A lot of, of team defending, two defenders in the area for the rain. And look, some of that is manipulation of defense. You need to figure out how you're going to pull out an outside back and then isolate a purse, for instance, to get a, against a Quinn. I think the decisions right now, the way that Portland's getting the attacking third, it's either too hasty or there's not enough movement. And they've got to figure that out come second half. They're going to break down the rain. Mark Carson saying that when Mitch Purse is at her best, we are a different team. She's become so important to this club this season in particular. She's really good in open space. When space is tight, it's more difficult for her. Grasso still with it. It will be a corner. Portland picks up their first corner kick of this match in the waning moments of our first half here in stoppage time. Remember, no Tobin Heath today. So great with her service from the corner. It'll be Klingenberg. Mangus. Haran. Sonic got it back wide for Klingenberg. That will set up another corner. Gonna have to hurry. You would expect they will be allowed to take this corner and that'll probably do it for the first half. Will it make a difference? Murphy says no, she hangs on. So Jody Taylor's goal in the 27th minute, the difference so far. Zerain FC making their fans very happy in this first half. Let's hear what their head coach, Vlatko Anonofsky, has to say he's with Marissa. Flacco, you head into halftime up a goal, but I heard you talking to your defense a lot at the end of that half. What do you want to see out of their play? I think we just have to play the ball a little bit quicker. We have to process the ball a little bit quicker and play it out of there a little bit quicker because uh, we give them a time to set and uh, 
and adjust into their shape and uh, pressure us and not, not allowing us to play easy balls in. Uh, so a little faster, a little more sophisticated in the back. I think that the first entry pass uh, towards the middle is uh, something that we need to, uh, need, need to do better. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Coming up next, it's the NWSL Halftime Show. We will go around the league and recap this weekend's NWSL action, and Allie will give me her playoff preview. Plus, Jen and Allie will break down the first half. You're watching the NWSL on ESPN. Broadcast is presented by authority of the National Women's Soccer League and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the expressed written consent of the National Women's Soccer League. Welcome back. About ready to start the second half before we do so. Portland Thorns head coach Mark Parsons is with Marissa. Coach, we saw a lot of pressure out of your team to end that first half. What adjustments do you want to see in the attacking third going forward? Yeah, it was a great reaction. It was a disappointing to go behind, and obviously the start wasn't good enough for us. I think for us, we need to help, help ourselves with momentum, and, and when we get it, keep it, and not allow the transition that led uh, led to their goal, and, and then make continue to make better decisions. That was a big difference. We're finishing the attack with good decisions going forward, and if we don't um, put the ball where we want it, we've got to control transition because they've done very well in getting behind us quick. Thanks for your time, Coach. You. Jen? Thank you, Marissa. We are being told of one change for the Portland Thorns. Catherine Reynolds ready to check into the match and take the place of Purse. So not a like for like there. No, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're shifting into a three back then. And then you've got wing backs out of Klingenberg and Carpenter on the right side. And it was interesting too, talking to Vlatko Adonofsky this week, he specifically mentioned the impact of Catherine Reynolds when she came into the match for Portland in their meetings earlier this season. And her ability to really deliver a long ball in particular was something that he was going to be wary of. So we'll see how things play out. Second half underway now from Cheney Stadium in Tacoma. Rain FC leading the Thorns 1-0 and on the ball now. Jenkins, Rapino waiting for it, volleys in the header too high. Oh, Taylor nearly had another. It's right off the kickoff, Jenkins gets end line. Rapino just knocks that one back across frame. But moments before that, it was this challenge, Beverly Yana's coming in on Haran, both players shaken up. And that's what sprung the attack when you saw McNabb dribbling away and that set up Dink Jenkins. No Tobin Heath for Portland. Being told a minor injury, keeping her out and unavailable today. Bethany Balser did not start this match for Rain FC. She's been dealing with a bit of a groin injury. Player who has really burst onto the scene in her first year in the NWSL, Balser. Out of Spring Arbor University in the NAIA. There's Horan, one of the players you said had to be on the ball more for Portland in this second half. Grasso turns with it as Carpenter to her right Ford offside Caitlin Ford getting the start today in place of Heath we saw it at the end of the first half and here in the second half Haley Rasso's ability to break lines when she does get on it I don't mind her coming back and get picking the ball up in deeper areas if she can spring in behind that midfield of the rain it can open things up for Portland. Both players colliding that time. Brynja Stotter. Looked like Yanez again. I was going to say, yep. I thought it was Yanez potentially again. She's had a rough start to the second half, Yanez. 
Well, she initiated that first challenge on her end, but this oh. is Brenda's daughter. As Giannis goes up, it's that elbow goes right into the face of Brenda's daughter. That is scary to see. And Brenda's daughter obviously still feeling the effects of it. Remember, Portland has already made one change. They brought in Reynolds for purse to start this second half. <laughs> U.S. national team players uh, huddling up, getting a few words in during the break. We're certainly hoping that Brynja's daughter is going to be all right. Reminder, what's at stake here in this match today? The rain win, they are in to the playoffs, and that would also assure Chicago of the number two seed. If Portland is able to come back and win, and that keeps the hopes alive for the Washington Spirit, still trying to battle with Rain FC for that final playoff spot, and a draw between these two teams means Chicago is the number two seed in that last playoff spot still up for grabs. Five matches remaining in the NWSL this season. There is the international break coming up next weekend. U.S. national team playing a couple of matches in South Korea. One match for the NWSL will take place in that break, Washington and Orlando. That is Tobin Heath's seat for today. All we're told was a minor injury keeping her out of action. How much, Ali, and in what ways is Portland missing her right now? What well, I mean, of course, Tobin Heath is Tobin Heath, one of the best players in the world, so you can't replace her. But if you watch the way this game is playing out, Tobin Heath has the ability to pin back the opposition's fullback, and you're not seeing that. Nielsen on this, the right side for Seattle, has been getting forward. She's the one who provided the cross that ultimately Jody Taylor scored on. So, yes, we think about Tobin Heath's ability offensively, what she can bring, assist, score herself. But I think perhaps more importantly today, they're missing the ability for her just to pin back the opposition's fullback. Bring your daughter at this point. Probably just trying to get the bleeding stop. It's a good <laughs> sign. And it's a nasty elbow from Yanez right into the face of Brynja's daughter. Yellow card was issued to Yanez. As it should be. I mean, there's a, of course you protect yourself. That's reckless. I was just watching. I mean, the whole time that they've been tending to her, you're watching everyone's faces when they're watching, looking at her. I don't think it's pretty. So two players booked in this match so far, both for Rain FC, Yanez just now, and Teresa Nielsen in the first half. <laughs> Ford for Portland was also issued a yellow card in that first half for the play where she undercut goalkeeper Casey Murphy. So after this lengthy delay, get ready for some stoppage time at the end of this one is all I can tell you about that. Second half barely just begun, but Dagny Brynja's daughter, former Florida State Seminole national champion, Icelandic international. Hey, stop the bleeding, patch me up, get me ready to go. Three weeks from today, the NWSL playoffs presented by Budweiser get underway with semifinal Sunday. It'll be live on ESPN2, semifinal one at 1.30 Eastern time, semifinal two at 3.30 Eastern, and then the NWSL championship game also presented by Budweiser on Sunday, October 27th, live on ESPN, 3.30 Eastern from Salem Stadium at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. You can go to nwslsoccer.com for ticket information. Get there if you can. We know three teams in so far. We know the North Carolina Courage 
are the Shield winners. They will be hosting a semifinal. Chicago's in. Portland is in. That is where it stands at the moment. Offside flag did go up. Turan was going after it. When do you think if Portland's going to find their way back? Level into this match. It could be off of set pieces. Haran just drifts offside. Brynja's daughter. Big in this play. It is Carpenter who crosses it. The big paw of Murphy doesn't get it far. Rasso spun around. Brynja's daughter. But some good life from the Thorns after that delay. Dagny Brynja's daughter, 28 years old, has played every minute of the last six matches for the Thorns. Turns with it here. Took her touch a little too far. FC really trying to pin the Thorns in, but Haran to the rescue. Klingenberg dribbles it through. At the very least, the Thorns right now making the rain think and have to adjust there in the back. It has benefited them this in second half with Klingenberg and Carpenter going into those wing back spots. Now both those players sit on the outside shoulders of Beverly Yanez and Ali Long as holding mids. And there's space there for them to work. Pino making her fourth appearance of the season, her second start. Was in Milan earlier this week. Oh, just picking up the Best Player in the World award from FIFA. I mean, fantastic World Cup she had. The goals, the impact that she had for the U.S. squad. But it's fascinating, no Kerr on that, best 11. Yeah, Ada Hegerberg, you know, it, it's a weird imbalance with how much they value club versus country. Yeah. Something has to be sorted out, because you think about it, Megan Rapinoe's only played a few times for the rain. Carpenter, another good looking ball. Rapino and that did not sound good. She cried out immediately after delivering that ball. And it was Brynja's daughter again. I was going to say again. a little payback. You'd, you'd have to assume. Ball gets away and then the challenge comes in from Brynja's daughter. Fourth yellow card of this match handed out now. I think the ref's done a nice job thus far. I would agree, keeping things in check, not being afraid to pull yep. those cards out early if needed. Reynolds, second half sub, chases this one back. of the advantages you talked about it, those wing backs carpenter and Klingenberg getting up in the attack good for portland what are some of the ways that the rain can try to attack this formation as they're doing it right now Let's see what nielsen does trying to find yanez well one of the things the rain are going to be wary of is committing too many resources forward you're sitting up one nothing as it is 
But to answer your question, Jen, I mean, ultimately, you then have a 3v3 situation where you've got Megan Rapino, Jody Taylor, and Darian Jenkins going up against the three back of Portland. I think you isolate them and you take those opportunities when you can. You let those three go to work. Fifth corner kick of the match coming now. Catley will use her left foot, swing it in. Here we go, Doug. Who wants it? Ball still up for grabs. It is Sinclair who eventually wins it for Portland. Ford. Christine Sinclair has been kept awfully quiet in this match today. Second all-time international leading goal scorer behind Abby Wambach and one of the leading goal scorers in this league as well. 49 career goals for Christine Sinclair. That's third in the league. And there just hasn't been a lot of space for her to work with, with both McNabb and Long playing in those six positions, double pivots. Not a lot of space there in front of the back line. Rasso did well to stumble on forward enough and keep control and earn the corner. Third of the match for the Thorns. Wind blowing in toward the goal, but Klingenberg's going to play it short. Now she'll get it back. Haran lurking in the back of the pack, but it wasn't able to make it there. Now Klingenberg will try it from the other side. One of those great signs you often see in Providence Park. Sure things in life, death, taxes, and Haran headers. <laughs> Always something to watch out for. Klingenberg looking for her in. Rain had her covered. Ford offside. A couple of times she's been caught in situations like that. And let's go down now to Marissa. Down here on the sidelines, I've heard a lot of conversation between Rain head coach Vlako Adonofsky to Ali Long in the midfield. I just talked to Vlako about that, and he said they want Ali Long to drop deeper defensively because they see how much pressure Portland is putting on their defense. They're set those long balls coming in from Portland. Thank you, Marissa. I think we have seen a, a more potent attack from the Thorns in the second half. And that's interesting because McNabb typically a center back actually by nature. You'd think she'd be the one that would be sliding back in. But if he is wary of those long services, Alley Long is decent in the air, has more height. Uh, France thought about coming out for that ball. The volley from Rapino gets away from her. What did Megan Rapino tell Marissa Pilla before the game? He will dash some dreams here today. The dreams of the Portland Thorns of hosting a semifinal, something that they have become accustomed to doing the last couple of years. If this result stands, that is exactly what would happen. Chicago would get that right to host a semifinal along with North Carolina. Rain FC would be into the playoffs, so they would dash the hopes of the Washington Spirit as well, claiming that final playoff spot. Cascadia rivalry for you today from Tacoma, Washington for the NWSL and ESPN. Jen Hildreth, Allie Wagner, Marissa Pilla, glad to have you with us. Jody Taylor's goal in the 27th minute, the difference. Rain FC out in front. And some sloppy play, I think choppiness in this last 10 minutes. A lot of direct service from both sides. Mm -hmm. 
right? Now so tangled up. And neither team is doing a, a good enough job of just changing it. I mean, use the limited width that there is. It's so narrow. A lot of short passes, and the long balls are, are vertical ones. They're not horizontal. Klingenberg ready to line up this free kick. It up over everybody, though, and out of bounds. I thought you could have utilized Carpenter on the far side, sprung her in behind, and then you look for that knockback across frame. We mentioned it earlier. Portland has had some struggles finding the back of the net. I mean, this is a team that has had a tremendous year in terms of goal scoring. 40 goals on the season is third in the league. Ties for the most in Thorns history in a single season, and yet the last few games, the goals just have not been there. Just one goal in their last three, and that came from a player, Tobin Heath, who's not available today. So as you get to this point in the season, obviously objective number one for Rain FC is get into the playoffs. Portland knows they're there. This is when you need to be fine-tuning, right. right? Ironing out the wrinkles, but Finding a way to get on the scoreboard, something that has troubled this Portland team here down the stretch. And juxtapose that with Chicago and the two goals they scored the other night. Typically, you think Sam Kerr, well, it's Yuki Nagasato and Cole Aprico. That when you're getting other players on the score sheet, it bodes well for you. We got Di Bernardo, actually, Di Bernardo oh, just me, coming yes. back. Yep. Here comes Rapino, the crowd aware of it. She lays it off to Catley. Rapino diagonal ball. Too close to French. Haran comes charging in to win the ball. Had it taken off her foot, though, by Long. Incredible work by Long. First she closed down in that wide area, advancing outside back, and then she covers in behind. Arpino just sticking with it here. Can Portland find a way, find that space, stretch this rain defense out? Klingenberg gets it across. It was just out of the reach of Ford. Thorns shut out in their first two meetings of the season. Now that number of scoreless minutes continues to rise. As Haran is down and Becca Quinn just a moment ago, slow to get up for Rain FC. Haran had the assist on Tobin Heath's game winning goal in Portland's last match against Houston. You know, her numbers down this year compared to last year, which you see there. When she had those 13 goals, that was a single season record for the Thorns, was named NWSL MVP. But this year, not been able to make as much of an impact on the scoreboard, but still obviously such an important player for the Thorns. An incredibly different season, right, with the World Cup cut right in the middle of the season. This was a few moments ago, the challenge between Haran and Yanez, and that may have been where Haran is now feeling the effect. Yeah. She pulls up lame. And they've been looking at that shin area. 
So you know, Jen, one one thing that's of a note. I mean, of course, Rian is incredibly important to this side, but I'm looking at how they can break down this back line of the rain, and you got to look at the positioning of Klingenberg and Ellie Carpenter, the wing backs. Do they get on the back line of the rain, or do they sit in the half space between the midfield and the backs? I think Klingenberg is doing a nice job with that positioning on that far side. If she sits in the half space, that will draw out the fullback more. Now you have opportunity for Rasso to slip in behind or forward if she's cutting across. If you get on that back line, of course, you're just looking to spring in and serve. But I think an opportunity for Portland is to continue to pull out those outside backs in the rain and then use some of those inside out runs and the pace advantage they have. Haran back onto the field. Sorna Gorchevich is warming up for Portland just in case. Pass back to French. Not the easiest. Turned over to Long. The former third takes the shot. Can't get it on target. Well, there's bravery playing out of the back sometimes. They're just simply overplaying. Soft touch by Brynja's daughter right into the path of Valley Long. She picks it up. Near post covered. Now substitution will be made for the Thorns. Haran is going to stay on. Caitlin Ford is going to come off to make way for Sorna Gorchevich. This is a player who started the first nine matches of the season for the Thorns, but has just two appearances, Ali, in the last 13. What can she do here? She's a similar player to Ford and that they're both good back to goal, hold up players, they can link up play. And I think her ability in the half space is something that Thorns can look to utilize. But I think she's quite similar to Ford, in fact, and now just fresh legs and someone who's good in the box. Serna Gorchevich. Switzerland's all-time leading goal scorer in her second year as a Portland Thorn. How choppy has his second half been? Yeah. First half was choppy. This is even more so. Thorn's still not out of danger yet, but they do at least force Klingenberg back to defend on that time, Rain FC. Twenty minutes remaining for this Portland Thorns team, which desperately wants to get back home to Providence Park and host a playoff match there. If this result stands. That's not happening. They're going on the road. Arpino. Jenkins goes down, free kick coming for the rain. Didn't take Serna Gorchevich long to get into this match. And are we gonna see another yellow? Nope, just the spray coming out for Matt Franz. Well, Serna Gorchevich not afraid to mix things up, comes in heavy on Jenkins. And this is prime position for Rapino whip service. Megan Rapino voted the best player in the world. As you said, a tremendous World Cup. Can she come in here late and have an impact for her club team? Drives this one. Shot from outside the box is wide by Nielsen. I think these last 18 minutes or so are fascinating, Jen, for the Thorns because, yes, they need to take risks and push to earn a position to possibly host that one of those semis, but I think they also need to focus on building confidence and consistency. So how much risk do you take or do you work on certain fundamentals? Great looking ball for Carpenter. Haran ready to one time and Murphy with the save. Big 
big save. The crowd loved that. They love this substitution as well. Bethany Balls are getting ready to come into this match for Rain FC. And it was a really good build up from Portland. Springing Carpenter on that far side. And then Haran with the half volley chance. Big save by Murphy. I know there are some ball serve for Rookie of the Year <laughs> signs floating around in the stands, and some of the fans so graciously came up and showed them to us. There's earlier. Crowner now. <laughs> I'd say she's got a great case to be made. Five goals, two assists on the season for the rookie who went undrafted, but has found her way to a full spot. Rasso popped it up, but Murphy has it. Are you surprised at all, Allie, with that substitution that it's it's another attacking player and Balser in for Jenkins? Not necessarily because I think you want to keep her fresh and feeling good, even though she's managing minutes right now. I think a player like her, last three games, two goals and assists. The last four, excuse me. I, I think you want to keep her feeling that positive action, that positive energy. And, and so you give her limited minutes. In a big game like this, it's important for a rookie, especially as you head into playoffs, hopefully. Mentioned Casey Murphy being one of the stories of this rain team this season, stepping into goal. I mean, Bethany Balser is another one, the player that Vlatko Andonofsky now, outside of Megan Rapino, says is her best finisher and she is so versatile. She can come in and play a number of different positions for this team in the attack. And it could be an answer to how forward Klingenberg has been getting as a wing back if Balser can pin her back more. Carpenter. Sornogorcevic now. Right to long. Rasso harassing. It worked so far for the Thorns. Sinclair maybe thinking she had somewhere yeah, over there. Pass. One thing about Ellie Carpenter, talking to Megan Klingenberg this week, said she just never gets flustered. Because I was asking her, you know, how is, how is this young kid, in your words, Megan, that's what she called her, How's this young kid going to handle a Megan Rapino all game long? But you know, she, she just, nothing phases her. She's up for the challenge. Well, think back to when Megan Rapino said, hey, mm -hmm. she's young, she'll learn. <laughs> After she diced her up in one game. <laughs> and I think the next game out, Ellie Carpenter had a fantastic performance against Rapino. Giannis saw an opening for Balser. Balser knows where she wants to go. It's toward the goal, Ooh. and then she clips into French. I don't know if her just forward momentum kept going there or what. French <laughs> held on the ball. I don't know. I've never right. been that fast. I wouldn't know what that feels like. <laughs> also, once again involved in the action. For more on her, let's bring Marissa in. I just spoke with Vlako Andonovsky, and he said that Bethany Balser sub was not just an athletic, fresh leg sub, but also to help expose this channel that's developing on this side of the field. But he said it's also a defensive sub because she has some fresh legs to defend against Portland's Megan Klingenberg, who is starting to get really high in the attack. As suspected, Ali Wagner. Well, some things we get right, some things we don't. <laughs> but you could see in that last attack from Balser, Ananosti described her as a, her ability to glide through the lines. And you can just see how effortless she moves and pulls away from defenders. It's going to be fascinating to watch to see how she develops in the NWSL. I think her decisions, when I go back and watch some of her moments, some of her decisions have been right on. And then she's got that aggressive mentality to take players, find her shot. She gets in dangerous positions. Portland now making a substitution. Haley Rasso was on the ground, and she now actually gets subbed out. Did walk off just fine, but Simone Charlie comes into the match. A speedy forward out of Boston, Massachusetts, former Vanderbilt Commodore, former track star for the Commodores as well. Oh, 
you know, ready to go. These are one of those restarts you have to be ready for. Not so fast, our referee says. Wants Rapino to bring it back. Now Catley will take over. and Catley have not had an awful lot of time this season to work on that connection, but as Lada Gononofsky pointed out, it doesn't take you too long to adjust when you've got a great player coming back in. You, you figure it out pretty quickly. Mangus. The work of Ali Long right now. And it's a chance. Oh, Rapino was waiting on the other side. She comes after it now. One goal has been enough in this series this season for Rain FC to win the match. One nothing, the final scoreline in the first two meetings of the season. If they hang on, keep that score as it is, they will indeed clinch a playoff spot. The last one available. French under some pressure, not afraid. Maybe she should have been. My, my. I saw Uber Lorries pay the price for it with Tottenham this weekend. Adriana French pulled off the first one, but mighty close on that second. It's a fine line. It really is. Building out of the back, playing with bravery, and not making smart decisions. Well, a mistake in that area of the field so is costly. so costly. French not forced to pay for it. Rapino with some skill to get her on her end. Long. Two defenders in front, curls herself around. Balser has been so good in the box, and yes, yeah, she's got another one. Balser. Well, Bethany Balser has been feeling it as of late. Gets in a nice little gap outside the center back and gets herself turned face. She's so smooth. She knows exactly where the defender is going to shift to. She goes against her momentum, cuts it back, and then finds the near post to add insult to injury against French. Big time goal by the rookie. Sixth goal of the season for Bethany Balser, who continues her hot streak. You mentioned it, Allie. Keep it rolling if you're Rain FC. That's what Vlako Andonofsky wants to see. And she comes in and does that. Gives a little insurance. Two goal lead now for Rain FC. She's just so silky. The way she got herself faced, she knew exactly where Mangus was going to go as defender that she was going to overbite. Charlie. Substitute trying to make a difference on this end for the Thorns. Carpenter, too high, too much. <laughs> Teresa Nielsen with both assists on the rain goals, by the way, in this match. Told you earlier, over 7,000 expected a record crowd to watch any kind of a soccer match in Cheney Stadium. Tacoma Defiance, the USL club of the Sounders play here as well. And the crowd has got to be loving what they're seeing as Murphy is going to try to keep that shutout intact.
Horan chasing after it. And now a free kick will be given to the Thorns, but Horan, who had a hard time getting up after a collision earlier, not that long ago in this second half. Now she, back on the ground. Yeah, you're right. She's been in the trenches. Gets to the ball first. Then the challenge from Catley. We talked about it earlier. I think those are the positions you want to see Haran in, making those runs out of midfield, getting into the seam in front of the back line of Seattle. I think with that first touch, Jen, if she had looked up, Casey Murphy was off her line, the ball's in the air. I think she might have had a go herself. But this is still a really good position for them. It's Portland Thorns team, which was embarrassed, outworked, after that 6 nothing loss to North Carolina on September 11, he says they have regrouped, they've come out, they've talked things through. Can they get the results? Can they find some goals? Haran will take this herself! We have seen Lindsay Haran strike in such a situation before, but does not get this one on target. And I thought that one was tracking well. Bethany Balser's goal in the 81st minute. Extending the lead to two to nothing. And I tell you what, if there is ever a player that would give young players hope across this country, look no further than Bethany Balser and what she's done this season. Coming what? out of the NAI. No. It's amazing. Undrafted. Here she is again. Over to Rapino. Megan Rapino had her shot blocked. Just the fourth appearance of the season for the FIFA Women's World Player of the Year. Nifty little flick back to Catley from Rapino. Yanez! Up over the outfield wall. Steph Cox getting ready to come in. One of those players who has spent much of this season on the injury report. Able to get healthy. An assistant coach who is also signed to play for this team. She will come in replacing Jody Taylor who scored the game's first goal in the 27th minute. And obviously not a like for like substitution. Stephanie Cox defender but as much as we didn't talk about Jody Taylor today, the way that she occupies the center backs, that creates space for their wingers to impose their personality on the match. As much as it was a quiet day, I still think her impact oftentimes goes overlooked, much like a Beverly Anna's. Washington Spirit, Chicago Red Stars, in particular, two teams paying close attention to what is going on here today in Tacoma. If the Rain win, they get into the playoffs. Chicago is the number two seed. They will host a semifinal, and you have to wait until the final day of the season to determine the order of those seeds, three and four. Well, they're going to have to break down a five back now with Stephanie Cox in the match. Sonnet toward her and flicks it, Charlie. Couldn't get there, North Serena Gorchevich. It will be a corner for Portland. Fifth of the match. Klingenberg punched by Murphy out to Brynja Stoddard, blocked by Catley. Murphy's done well. Carpenter, long throw, and Murphy hangs on. What an incredible story this Rain FC team has been this season. Sometimes 
with as many as 10 players listed on the injury report for a single match. Six season ending injuries that they have had to contend with. Megan Rapino out for the majority of the season and yet here they are right now staring down a spot in the playoffs. Meanwhile, the mighty Thorns faced with some pretty serious questions as they have one game remaining after this one. To try to get things figured out. They play on that final day of the season against Orlando. Against Washington, excuse me. And we'll host the Spirit on October 12th. believe we have another yellow card coming if Emily San it turns around. There it is. Fifth yellow card handed out today. Lunging challenge on Balser. Well, Allie, we we're not quite sure what we'd see today. It has been Rain FC's match, though, to this point as they get ready for this free kick. Rapino. Carpenter. Good recovery from McNabb. In your opinion, what do you think is the biggest concern for Portland at this point? You know, I'm sitting here just ruminating over how disjointed their attack feels to me. It feels stale. I mean, when you've got a Sinclair in the game and she has very limited touches, when you've got a Haran in the game and she has to work so hard just to find the ball, you've got to figure out ways to free up those players. And it just does not look like a cohesive effort right now I think the movement is very robotic and you're not thinking three steps ahead where you're pulling out a player out of position that you ultimately want to exploit seven minutes of stoppage time added on here remember had that injury to Dagny Brynjus daughter which took up a lot of it right toward the start of the half took an elbow to the face I mean they have the pieces Portland does We've seen glimpses of it throughout the year. I think they've been hurt by the World Cup. Typically peaking at this time of the season, they're not. Haran flicks it forward. Charlie has got to finish that off. And that's a simple answer, too. It's just joining as you can be when you have looks like this, a great flick on by Haran, and you've got the runner in behind with Simone Charlie, and she tries to go near post. Do anything but hit miss near post. Slide that one across frame, looking for a friend, tucking in the back post, but you've got to put that one across the goal mouth. Gorjevic. Rapino and Reynolds. A couple of <laughs> bumps exchanged. Portland just looking to go direct now. Haran's pushing up on that back line along with Charlie Sinclair, Turner Gorchevich.
And those are just going to be hopeful services. change coming and that will take Megan Rapino off the field the crowd as you might imagine will applaud Manu coming in to replace Rapino, who didn't get herself into the scorebook, but certainly her presence was felt. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, the difference that she makes for this Seattle, this rain team, is one of those impacts that only a few players in the world can provide. When you haven't been integra integrated with your squad and you can come into a match and take players 1v1, instead of, I mean, really the goal, I think, came off of her movement. And Anamanu just came into the match. A former Portland Thorn was waived by Portland, picked up by the rain in May of this year. Trying to help her team see this one out. We had talked earlier about how strong Portland has been. I mean, look, they're, they're a team filled with international players. In any type of year with an international event like Olympics World Cup, they're going to have to contend with a lot of absences. Nine players away at the World Cup tied for the most in the league this year. But they have figured out a way under Mark Parsons right. to finish strong all those years, finishing top two in the league the last three seasons. Having a harder time of it as they go down the stretch this time. And my goodness, the hits keep coming. So do the Thorns. Not giving up on the attack. Back to Sinclair. Haran still down in the middle of the field for Portland right now. The attack goes on. Charlie towards Serna Gorcevic. Mark Parson said his team played desperate in their last match against Houston. They were desperate to get a result. They did. They look desperate here, and Haran is still lying on the field. That is not a sight you want to see. You've seen her take hits and get up a couple of times in this match. You see it all the time with Lindsay Haran, the way she plays, the way teams play her. And the season that she's had, no break at all. Strong challenge between McNabb and Serna Gorchevich there. Then here comes in Haran. Goes to ground, in fact, before she even makes a challenge on it. She plants body, then undercuts McNabb, and she gets knocked. Takes one to the head. It's tempting always to think about Lindsay Horan as being really a much older and more veteran player than she really is. She's 25 years old. And remember that this was a player who bypassed college, went to play professionally overseas in France when she was 18 years old. And now 77 appearances with the U.S. national team. Appeared in every match but the final at this past World Cup. One of those players that coaches often have to say, please don't come to practice. You need to rest. You need to take some days off. And I think some of the players returning from the World Cup have struggled. I mean, it's been a difficult year. And to manage that as a professional is incredibly challenging. Now you look at, you know, Megan Rapino had that lingering Achilles injury. That took her a while to come back from. Alex Morgan has, I think, had with that one appearance back after the World Cup for Orlando, and she's out for the rest of the season. It's Dunn had to take time off. Yeah, it's 
<laughs> it's not easy. It's such no. a long and strenuous build to even get to the World Cup. Then you go through that and then you come back and the stretchers having to be brought out for Lindsay Horan. This obviously will be a huge concern for the Thorns as they go forward. All three changes have been made. We are past our seven minutes of allotted stoppage time, but some of that, of course, taken up here with this Haran injury. One match remaining for Portland after this one. They will host the Washington Spirit on October 12th. Portland will either finish as the three or the four seed, meaning they know that at number one, if they finish as the four seed, North Carolina awaits if they're three. They'll have Chicago. Well, here's the play that she got injured on. It's when McNabb goes over the top. Haran's head goes into the ground. the way anyone wanted to see this match end for Lindsay Horan. And she is indeed holding her head as both hands up there on her forehead. So all of those in Portland country certainly will be keeping a very close eye on the reigning league MVP and how she fares. And back to the match at hand. No substitution will be made. The Thorns have already used all of their subs. Rain FC ready for that whistle and to claim their spot in the NWSL playoffs. Expect a celebration in Chicago as well as this result means the Red Stars will be your number two seed. They'll host a semifinal, and Rain FC is going back to the postseason with this win. the rain and the thorns today and it was the thorns day wasn't it Alec? well i mean i <laughs> thought the rain the yeah day. exactly <laughs> it was their day i mean i thought they controlled the match i thought the the way that they decided to go when they decided to go it put portland under a ton of pressure and they absorbed the attack that portland threw at them ultimately and on this small pitch Oftentimes, you have to manage those moments, manage those challenges, and I think Rain owned their home field tonight. So, Rain FC are into the playoffs. One of their goal scorers today is standing by with Marissa. Bethany, your team needed a win to get into the playoffs. You got that today. This team has faced so much adversity this season with injuries. What has brought this team to this moment right now? Just a whole lot of hard work. I mean, we, with all the injuries we've had, we knew that um, we had to step up for each other, that people who might not see the field a lot are going to have to get those minutes and, and do it for each other. And our team just has so much heart. We're a big family. And so it's, it's an awesome feeling. We're super excited. Sixth goal for you this season. How were you able to exploit that half space that Portland was showing on defense? Uh, yeah, um, going over film, we knew that that would be um, available. And um, yeah, when I come on, I just got to do my best. And um, credit to Allie on the pass. And um, Sometimes shots fall. It's great. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, more so often humble. than not, those yeah. shots have fallen know. for that young lady this season. And she helps her Reign FC team into the top four. And now you know your four teams that will be in the NWSL playoffs. That order is not yet set. We know North Carolina is one. We know Chicago is two. Portland and Reign FC in some order will be three and four. Once the season is over, here's what's left. Orlando and Washington playing during the FIFA break next weekend. And then look at that final day of the season. That's when you'll find out your semifinal matchups with those four matches on October 12th.
Looking back at this one, Allie, Jody Taylor got the job done in the 27th minute for the rain. She did, and it was off the right back from Seattle Rain, getting forward. The ball curled in. Jody Taylor's in front of her player, spins her, and then fires that one far post. Sitting pretty in that 27th minute. Bethany Balser, though, would come into this match and add another goal to her tally on the season. Yeah, Vlaco said, well, it's not just offensive, it's defensive too. Nah, I don't buy it. <laughs> Strictly offensive, slots that one near post with that left peg. Same two players who scored on Wednesday. Do it again for the rain as they get the win in a playoff spot. We're going to come back, wrap things up from Tacoma after this. Rain FC victorious over the Portland Thorns, earning themselves a spot in the playoffs. The Thorns will be there as well. So, Ali, your takeaway for both teams from this one? Look, I think the Rain are peaking at the right time, and they're getting certain pieces back that are going to continue to help them elevate their game. But as for Portland, I think it's a team that's going to utilize these next two weeks to develop a rhythm, figure out some of their way they want to offensively build. But they've got this two-week period to nail things down. Portland back in action on October 12th. Well, the NWSL on ESPN returns three weeks from today. That's Sunday afternoon, October 20th, live on ESPN2. Four teams head into the NWSL playoffs presented by Budweiser. Semifinal number one at 1.30 Eastern, followed by semifinal two at 3.30 Eastern. Final score today, 2-0 rain. For Ali Wagner and Marissa Pilla, I'm Jen Hildreth saying so long from Tacoma.